Hello everybody and welcome back to Collection Log Progress, the series where we try to fill in as many log slots as possible. In the last episode we started off the Giant's Foundry, and in this episode we continue our endeavours into smithing by grinding out here and in Keldergrim at the Blast Furnace. We use a lot of gold this episode, burn through a lot of our cash tags, but we do manage to push forward for a few more levels. I hope you'll enjoy the episode and enjoy what's to come, as there's a few more surprises hidden within. Anyway, enjoy! Just to show where we last left off, you can see here that we're starting at 150 points today, with only the items that aren't the mould left to obtain. Well, except the cannonball mould, but that's a separate thing that doesn't help with the minigame. This will allow us to make the highest tier of swords, get the most points and smithing XP per game, in order to get this done as fast as possible. You can see what we're starting off with here. Later on in the endeavours though, I do need to go purchase around 400 more of each of our, in order to finish off the foundry. But you'll see that as we go. I also realised that last episode I didn't really show a full run through of how to make a sword. So even though this one may not be perfect, I'll show you a quick run here. It's fairly simple for the most part. As you can see though, I'm messing up immediately and I'm not fully sure what I did. Oh, it's more because I forgot my ice gloves. That was all. <laughs> so yeah, that's something to note to begin with. You immediately want to take some ice gloves with you as it makes it able to pick up the sword immediately and continue. Initially, the UI for this minigame looks quite daunting. As you can see, three bars. The top bar is almost irrelevant. It just measures your score, basically, what the end result will be. If you're using the Giant's Foundry plugins as well, the area you're meant to be at will highlight as well as tell you details about how to play the minigame in the top left. Here, when you see the yellow marker, click on the same tool you're using, as long as it won't put you over or under the appropriate heat, to do it. I guess I should explain that to you. There are two places in the foundry you can gain and lose heat, while three if you include passive loss. The waterfall here, if you use the second option, quickly reduces heat on an item, which allows you to put it into the appropriate area. And the lava pool, over to the bottom left of the screen, would be how you heat it back up. There are three different tools to use in this minigame, a hammer, a grindstone, and the sharpening wheel. And each of them need different levels of heat and go different directions, depending on which you're doing. The hammer, you lose heat. The uh, wheel, uh, sorry, the sharpening stone, you lose heat. But the grindstone, you gain heat. So with those, you want to basically be with the red. If you're ever in red or green, you want to start at the top of them. And if you're in yellow, you always want to start at the bottom because it works up. You basically repeat this, and the more bars you use, the more cycles you have to do. But it also means you've got a higher chance of getting the special bonus uh, perfection thing. The reason we're also going for the smithing outfit first, and we didn't purchase anything else first, is because it increases the likelihood that you'll receive one of these moments where you can perfect, just like that. Unfortunately, I walked away there, so I think when you leave it and come back in those moments, it doesn't allow you to obtain the special bonus. Which is something to keep in mind if you uh, have enough heat to do one more. But you want to be careful as if you are ever slipping up, if you ever do it out of heat, you will lose score. So if on that top bar you ever see the arrow go down slightly and there's a red patch to the right of it, that just means that at some point you've slightly messed up. Overall this minigame isn't too difficult, it just requires a bit of concentration. You can't really be too absent-minded with it. As if you aren't paying attention to the heat you're losing, you will fail the sword. Coming up on about halfway now, you've seen basically that all there is to it. There is one thing I forgot to mention, and there's that little device uh, on the left of the screen near the lava pool. That is where you can place your sword if during the minigame you want to leave or anything like that. It holds it in there and keeps it at the temperature you left it in. This will affect your score slightly, I believe, as part of the score bonus is the time. Uh, when you hand in your sword, it will show you the appropriate time you're doing it. So you want to try and get fast at this eventually. That being said... It is better to perfect your swords, make sure you don't make mistakes, then to rush it. So, but eventually you will come to a balance where you're getting them both. Even I, like when I was coming to 10, 15 hours in, was still occasionally messing up one or two things. So don't beat yourself up over it if you are missing them. One thing I will note is that while I was losing a lot of money because I was doing the top tier to do this fast, you can actually make some profit here by doing different alloys. At the time of recording, I believe Steel and Mithril were making profit, but you're always best to consu consult your GP per XP guides or your wiki guides just to make sure that at the current time that you're doing this, that you're making money. One of the benefits to this will be the Colossal Sword, which I believe I will get last. The reason um, I'll get last is because it has no practical application for me. 
It's a good mid-tier weapon, but for the price of points, it's uh, arguable as to whether you should go for it, as I know other players and friends of mine who are doing it who haven't managed to make the most use of it because their resources at that point in the game aren't as high. Though for a slash weapon that does more damage depending on the size of the creature, it's not too bad. I will at some point in the future possibly test out, taking it to probably Seracnus as I want to grind more clues, and I'll show you there. Coming along, you can see that it's a lot of back and forth running, but whenever you hand in a sword, your energy is recharged. I put the graceful on now, but basically the moment you get smithing outfit, you can start to change over to the uh, different equipment there. Overall, I'd rate this minigame quite highly. Not quite as high as Guardians of the Rift. I think that that minigame offers a reprieve to smithing where, sorry, to runecrafting in the way that smithing didn't quite need. I believe if smithing was as how can I put this, tedious as runecrafting was, then this minigame would be even more important. The minigame itself, going from start to end, if you're going as fast as possible, doesn't take that long. We're talking 13 to 15 hours if you're playing efficiently for the whole thing, which in terms of runescape grinds is nothing when you consider that trouble brewing is like 400 hours with an alt, which is another grind that I am daunted to do. Recently, one of my friends, Schlack in the clan, achieved his full, uh, Castle Wars and Trouble Brewing capes, and he did well. As you can see there, I finished off, you get some coins, and then you just rinse and repeat the cycle for the next one. Doing this along came one of our clan members, Mark V. Dozo, or just Mark. The reason he came along was to obviously Giant's Foundry came out and wants to achieve it, but also it was the clan's skill of the week was smithing, which was a big motivator for me to push this one out of the way, and also grind towards my 99 with it. I ended up doing Giant's Foundry basically all in one go. I played one night, then immediately come along. The next day I continued doing it. So if you want to check how long this took or the appropriate rates I was getting, note that I was getting about 247k XP an hour that dropped down to about 230k when I was taking it slow. So if you're just watching my ex total XP in the top corner, that kind of gives you an idea of how long I was here as we go through it. Handing in this sword, we come on a huge milestone, 92 smithing, which in itself is cool as it puts us at the XP halfway mark to 99, but also that hits 2200 total on the account, which allows us access to the highest total level worlds. I won't often use them as I've heard they're quite laggy, but it's really good to have and puts us only 77 levels off max it. Starting off this episode, we can see that we're at 652 collection log slots, meaning we're around 50 off getting to the mark where we can change our clan icon permanently. Giant's Foundry, as you can see here, offers nine new unique items, which will push us up closer and closer. Here, after a few more swords, we're able to buy our first one of those, the boots. Now, in retrospect, I wish I'd gone for the gloves so I could immediately do what I needed to do with my ice gloves, but the boots being the cheaper one is also good to get. A lot of mini games, you want to just go for the most expensive to make the grind less and because they all have the same effect. But with this one, it's good to get the least expensive because of that bonus that I mentioned, uh, the more times to perfect it. And here you can see the bonuses. It also makes smithing on an anvil slightly faster. Here I met a guy with a cool name and also a cool pet. So I congratulated him on it, only to find out he got it in 12kc. I'm nearly 150, maybe 200kc there, not seeing anything, so damn, Spoon. Coming in a few more swords later, you can see we're at the 3500 mark, which allows us to buy the smith's gloves. Which... Similar to the last piece will allow us to get a boost. Reading through it, I don't think I paid too much attention, as if I did, I would have known what I find out soon. I buy that up, add to the log slots, very nice indeed, putting us up to 654. Initially, I had wasn't sure if you could use these in the minigame, as you need the ice gloves. And I was unaware until our good friend from the last clip, Mr. Runnerscape, informed me that you can mix the two together to make the Smith's gloves eye. I'm grateful for him that he did, because before then I tried to use it and was like, damn, can't use them. So, thank you to Mr. Runescape again. In this one, I hand in the sword here and get the highest points I've received and end up receiving the entire time. This is a mixture of good RNG and just the right mix to make it. Handing in our next sword, we are very blessed with the fact that we have pushed through these levels to get to 93. We are now over that halfway mark and pushing our way further and further towards the end of it, which is really cool. About an hour's worth more of swords, we managed to get enough points to afford the next piece of clothing. We are two off, and so I make the choice between the legs and the body. It doesn't make much of the difference, so I went with the one that would show off more, being the body itself. 
This puts us at three out of four of the pieces, and while this grind is taking a while, it's certainly one that you can grind through. It's, if I can focus on a grind for this long, it can't be that bad. Anyway. <laughs> Another sword handed in means one of two things, and if you look at the top right, I think it's pretty obvious. 94 smithing. This grind has pushed me up so many levels. I believe, honestly, it's something that you should definitely do pre-99. If for nothing else, then just to get the levels and slots out of the way, meaning you have to come back later. Also puts us 500 points off the next item, which means we've not got long, until we get this done. We hand in this sword here, and we manage to get ourselves another set of 4,000 points, meaning we can finally get the last piece of the smithing outfit, the legs, which gives you 100% bonus speed when smithing on an angle, but the main thing I'm happy about is the higher chance of getting the perfection bonus in here, meaning as we grind for those last few items, the colossal sword being the 5,000 point one, it's going to go a lot faster. And honestly, as I've been buying the items in general, I've noticed the speed go up. Just to back that up, let's immediately get the next one, the smithing catalyst. I wanted to get the other items first before I got this, even if this one is dirt cheap. I've heard this isn't very good and basically is drop worthy, but at least it's another slot done. Now, let's work on those other ones. A couple more games later and we come in with enough points to buy the two other cheap ones, a bias ore pack and the Kovag's grog. The Kovag's grog is a reliable way to boost smithing, and the ore pack, while I've seen grinds of it, isn't worth buying as it often just gives you coal and even when it has a chance to drop others it's not worth the input of ores you put into this to get it out. But the thing it is worth doing is filling up two more log slots. As you can see here we've only got two left, the sword and the mold. I'm going to save the big one for last and go for the mold next. Now with what for you was only a second, for me was another hour, we managed to save up another po enough points to buy the cannonball mold. This allows you to make double the amount of cannonballs, which while I don't make often, could be nice to do in my downtime some point in the future if I ever wanted to get enough to get more. I do have a massive stack of granite uh, cannonballs in the bank, because whenever I get the granite dust from gargoyles, I do like to make them into the cannonballs. You can see we've got a few bars here left, but I think at some point soon we've run out and have to purchase more in able to build the Colossal Blade. Continuing on the grind towards the Colossal Blade, we hand in a sword here, and as you can obviously see from the top right, we get level 95 smithing. I believe this is the last level we get from Giant's Foundry, but going from 90 to 95 is impressive. Here we come finishing off the last sword here. Just a little bit more work on the hammer. Hopefully we'll get there before the heat goes, we do. We come over, drop that in, and get our final reward. A little bit more cash, a little bit more XP. But none of that is matters right now because what we do here, we see we've got the 5,000 points required to finally green out the log. And with that, we get the Colossal Blade. This grind, man. Like, my clan mates called me nutty because of how I went about it. It's got a cool drag animation as you walk around with it. And while I don't think it suits the smithing armor the best, it is a cool looking item. But if we go over to our minigames tab, we can now see that finally we have another full green log. Giving us those nice juicy slots. Then, because it was skill of the week, I went over to Blast Furnace. I wanted to push forward in order to A, become rank 1 in the skill of the week, and B, because I was trying to get 99 while the event was still on. Initially, I was trying to learn this efficient zero tick method thing that I saw online, and as you can see from this first clip, I am doing it completely wrong. Uh, my tile is marked for the wrong place where you need to interact with it. I don't know about like uh, clicking it beforehand and... Loads of different bits. Later on I do get it right and I end up getting around um, 340k XP an hour. But these initial ones, as you can see on the left there, I am not getting it right. I won't bore you with it too much as I've, I'm have i sure you've probably seen Blaster and it's a million times. But it's definitely a tedious grind. Uh, I mentioned the same with Runecrafting earlier and how smithing isn't as tedious. Well, doing this makes me kind of want to change my mind on that statement. I, midway through the week of doing this, actually ended up burning out a little bit. I finished skill of the week and then I took a three day break from RuneScape as a whole just because my only goal each day was to get on and do smithing and I should not have done that to myself, if I'm honest. I'm glad I got it done, but I shouldn't have done it the way I did. Anyway, I'll come back to you when we've got a level. As you can see here, we're pretty close. We come here, click on this, click the that, open up our gloves and bam, we get 96 smithing. Putting is only three now off getting that end goal. A few hours later of running more gold, we come over to it here, click the gloves. I didn't have my XP tracker up, so I wasn't expecting it. But 97 smithing drops in there. Another about three and a half, four hours of smithing later, we come over, click here once again, and that drops as 98, putting us one off. I think it was at this point, if not a little bit before, that skill of the week ended. And if I bring up the score here, you can see where we ended up. 
And whilst it was quite competitive between the other ranks, I can see that I kind of zoomed off with my heavy grinding. I think even one of my clan mates called me a masochist at one point when they saw my rank on day two, and I think I had about two million at that point. So, yeah, when I want something, I will properly grind for it. Unfortunately, the next skill of the week will be delayed for a couple of weeks, as there is an inter-clan bingo going on, which, due to IRL circumstances, I won't be participating in. But more on that later. And as you saw in the background right there, I managed to just hit the 300 mil mark. Unfortunately, the item I chose to smith has a 0.5 XP modifier, and since I don't see where I am on that 0.5, I wasn't sure if it was going to immediately round up, and it did. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to land directly on the 300 mil, so I guess I'll just have to do that at 400 mil. But that's a nice marker to hit on my grind towards max. So finally, after a lot of grinding, a lot of frustration, and a lot of tiredness, we put in that final set of ore, click our goldsmith gauntlets to get that a drop, and get 99 smithing. This is another one down, I believe our 11th done. It could be more than that, it might actually be 10 left, so that means we've done more than that. Either way, it's one more on our road to max. I am so happy to be done with smithing, as buyables in general always feel bad as you just slowly see your bank balance drop. Or in my case, not very slowly. Anyway, after I figured out who sold it by asking a friend, of course, Thurgo who loves his pies has it, we went and bought the skill cape. I've never seen the emote for the skill cape, or if I have at least, I haven't remembered what it was. So we pick it up here, put on that nice cape. It's got some nice colours to it. I think it definitely fits the smithing, and from what I've seen, it fits well with the smithing outfit. I should have brought it here. But let's drop that emote. Oh, nice. Brings out an anvil and makes kind of a ghost replicas of different weapons and items. That's cool. I really like that. It's interesting how it raised it on a log as well. <laughs> nice. Now, wanting to escape from smithing, I went and did some more medium clues and got another mystery box. Sadly, no stale baguette, though. Just another diamond. After which, we did our weekly Tears of Gothics. I think I did my other one on the first week, but I forgot to record that one. This one, we managed to get a nice over 200 points, which is always good to see. Remember, if you do more quests, you get more time in here to do your tears. Plus, the diary gives you more XP, the Lumbridge Elite Diary. Because we are now um, grinding past other levels, our lowest one at the moment is Runecrafting still, which at 89 isn't too bad. I'm probably going to go to Guardians and change that. Post smithing, we sell all our stuff in order to buy back our purgations because in order to afford the uh, items, we did have to sell them. I know that in the process of buying back, I'm losing like a decent amount of money doing it either way. But with the fact that I'm also doing medium clues, I'm hoping that I'll be able to obtain rangers in order to make up for any lost cost here. Now, we need to have a talk a little bit. I have recently had developments in my life that mean I'm going to have less time available to play RuneScape. I have recently gotten a job, which means that some of my evening time especially will be taken away. This means that uploads and getting clips are going to be harder to keep consistent. I appreciate in the last episode when people said I could take longer to get clips. And I think that, especially with this new development, that's going to happen. I still am going to aim to get one out at least every two weeks now, but I can't guarantee it the way I would before. I appreciate all the time you guys are giving me, and I hope you guys are really enjoying it. The growth has been outstanding. Anyway, thank you for watching, and goodbye.